A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want to rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. Uh, this time, this is actually a follow-up for this um, polyphonic touch piano that I designed in a uh, past video. Semi-recent, actually. Uh, so anyway, uh, this was actually the first board that I assembled. And I noticed some issues with the design and some things that can be improved. And that's exactly what I've done. I've come up with this um, second uh, revision of the board. And you can see it. It looks very similar um, from the front. Uh, most of the changes are actually on the back. And I'm just going to pop one of these out to show you. And also, <laughs> notwithstanding, uh, this 3D printed case that I designed. And so, before I get into the case, though, let's actually look at the board. I'm just going to pop this out of the shell. And you'll notice here on the back, I moved the battery Originally, the battery was just a single cell on the front, and it kind of worked. Um, I had to reduce the brownout uh, voltage on the processor so it could run below 3 volts. And even then, it wasn't very loud, and I had a few, like, you could kind of tell, like, it was straining when you try to play multiple keys, so the battery life wouldn't have been great either way. So I opted for two uh, CR2032s, and it should run quite a bit longer uh, because even, you know, this this chip can run happily down to you know 1.8 volts or whatever but even down to like a little bit below three volts the speaker and everything works so these two batteries should run quite a long while and i was a little lazy and rushed towards the end um i had one more wire i had to connect between the two but then all these other traces were in the way and i didn't want to have to snake it up through the top and it would have been just kind of a pain honestly so I just opted to put solder points so I just soldered a wire that's really lazy I know it's it's not great having to do that but it works and whatever I just wanted to get the boards done and get them ordered as quickly as possible anyway the other thing you may have noticed is now there is a USB port so if you don't install batteries so probably would have been best to put a, um, a diode before the batteries so that uh, Currently, if you wire, if you plug in USB while there are batteries inserted, it'll try to charge the batteries, which is not a good thing if they're not rechargeable. And plus, it's wired straight across, so there's no current limiting or anything. So basically, the idea is uh, you either solder the, the batteries and don't solder the USB port, or solder the USB port and don't solder the batteries. So use one or the other, basically. Uh, so if you want to plug in USB to power it, then just take out the batteries or just don't solder them in a nutshell. Other improvement is I have these like debug headers on the front here and they're really practical, obviously, but uh, not so aesthetic. So what I did is I actually hid them. Um, I wired them as vias at 0.1 inch uh, spacing and I used um, the, was it the restrict or the stop layer, I forget which one, to expose the vias just on those pads so that you can come in there with um, a 0.1 inch header and plug it in, sort of hold it on just for programming uh, so that you can get the firmware on the chip. Or if you have uh, like a pogo header uh, with little pogo pins, that would work as well. But it gives it a way of programming it um, pretty easily without having to solder anything and from the front uh, you know it's nice and clean now yeah that's kind of it that I've changed um, everything else the layout of the keys everything I, I think I tweaked maybe some of the the keys and whatnot uh, you you might notice on the first set of boards I got all of them were like this there's actually a line that runs down on the center for some reason I, I think it has to do with maybe the black key above it um, because it lines right up with that 
and so something with the silk screening machine had trouble um, doing that luckily on this one it's much better now there is a little bit you can kind of see some striations but the silk screening is much thicker and much better maybe maybe it's not even anything that i did maybe it's um they use a different silk screen batch uh, because it's much thicker it's much more uniform it looks much nicer so i'm happy with that now as for the case um, I designed this in SolidWorks, uh, which is a CAD program if you're not familiar with. And uh, basically I ran through a couple different iterations. So I'll show you the first iteration was this guy. Uh, and the general design I added a little finger hold so that if you set the board in there, you know, there's no way to really pry it out. So I added a little finger hole so you can stick a finger, a ballpoint pen, something in there and poke it out from the back. Uh, and that allowed me to basically design this as pressure fit so that the board sits in here nice and snug and there's no screws or anything. So that makes assembly a lot easier. Uh, that was a good idea. The hole I got to my pinky size, I just measured my pinky, the uh, diameter. And so uh, obviously your fingers may vary, uh, but it works for me. Uh, the first revision, I didn't Put any kind of chamfer on the edges it's just kind of sharp it's not my printer has a little bit of an elephant foot problem uh, it's not ideal i added of course inset my logo which came out really nice i like that added the 45 degree angle to match the board and i added the usb port but if you notice i got a number of my measurements wrong um, the usb port I think what I did was I measured from the outside. I should have measured it from the in, inner lip of the case. And I got the measurement on this wrong. I kind of did the same thing. I set the lip to the outer part of the case when I should have added, you know, an extra uh, little space there. And then also, not to mention, I made it like uber thick. But one thing that I did like that I did is I added, I, I believe it was like a five degree angle so that when you sit it on... Uh, like a desk or something, it'll kind of tilt a little bit, like a keyboard does. Um, so in general, though, I, I think, yeah, it's just way too thick. This took like three and a half hours to print. It uses more material. Um, it doesn't look quite as thin and nice. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately, this I didn't really think this is actually a like really nice glow-in-the-dark material. Uh, and I'll show you some pics in a second of how it looks when I print I reprint it in this thinner version of the case. It looks absolutely great. But yeah, I kind of wasted this material. But uh, I guess it makes a good soap dish or tray. So I'm definitely going to reuse this for something. Uh, so anyway, that was my first revision. And because I got a number of the dimensions wrong and it wouldn't fit, um, I knew that I had to um, stop cutting corners and start printing like test files so what i actually did was i redesigned this and um so i got this new version i made it significantly thinner you can see here it's like you know three quarters as uh, three quarters of the thickness in the back there i adjusted the usb port location um and that's kind of it <laughs> the back is still identical and you can see in this white material, it's so much easier to see this logo. It looks really nice. I was actually thinking of doing two-tone printing. So print out white and then a layer of black in between so that it would accentuate the, um, you know, the inset parts of the logo. But I could definitely do that. I can set up the print file to do that. But anyway, so once I designed this on the computer, I wanted to make sure that it would work before I print out the whole thing because this still takes... I think about two hours to print and it uses like 30 grams of plastic so it's not like cheap or fast so what i did was i took the design file for this i loaded it into cura which is a slicer for my 3d printer and then i i lowered the um the z position so that it sank below the bed but just you know a few millimeters at the top surface were above and then when i sliced that it only sliced the top part and that's exactly what i have right here so you can imagine it's just literally the top part of the print and it ignores whatever's below the bed. So that's a that's a pretty good trick um, if you don't want to re-slice 
the um, the print file within the the CAD program, which you could definitely do and save it as a separate STL. But it's easier to just design this to final um, dimensions and everything, and then lower it on within you know your Cura settings. Lower the print so that only the top surface is visible above the print bed, and then when you slice it, it'll just slice what's visible. So you can see here, I um, I got it pretty close this time. The um, the dimensions on the corner are really snug. Uh, this side is a little bit um, a little bit too tight. So what I end up doing is actually just sanding this just slightly to make it smoother and a little bit easier to insert. It's still a little hard, but much better. I had the USB port mostly right. You can see here it's it's a little bit uh, too much towards the right. So I actually retweaked that and uh, moved it to the left a little bit. And the version that I got after that is this, which you can see, basically insert one side, get the corner in. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and there was another big thing. So yeah, I printed uh, this only to find out that uh, the batteries, I did not think of the Z dimensionality, the batteries interfere. So this case, you know, without anything, just plain bottom would work if I only had the USB port. But because I have the batteries, it actually uh, does not sit inwards enough. And then not to mention, I actually measured the, um, the inset on the USB port too shallow. So it's about 1.6 millimeters. I should have measured it from this top surface, but I did it from the, the bottom surface. So you can see here, it will never push down. So unfortunately, this is another coffee tray. <laughs> And the third iteration, I just uh, grabbed some calipers, measured the diameter, added like, I don't know, five millimeters or something just to make it just a little bit thicker. And um, I cut out two little circles where the batteries are um, inset about two millimeters, I believe. And you can see on this version, it sits like a glove. And like I said, I made it a little bit tight here, so it does kind of warp the case a little bit. It's not perfectly flat, if you see there, uh, but it's good enough, and it doesn't really rock when you set it on a table. So yeah, uh, that fits. It's plenty snug. It's not going to come out on its own, uh, but it's easy enough to put your finger in and pop it out from the bottom there. And yeah, those battery uh, indents worked fantastic, and it just sort of snaps together, and that's all the assembly you need. USB port now is at the right height. There's enough clearance around it. You can plug plugs in uh, without it fail, fouling. Assemble two. Uh, one for my sister and one for my desk at work when I get bored and I just want to make some beep boops. And yeah, works perfectly. This one, like I said, is with that really nice glow-in-the-dark case. And I really like that uh, when you assemble it, you can actually see the back of the board through the case. <laughs> and you can see the batteries peeking out. I really like the way that this one turned out. This would be fantastic if I had a glass bed to print on uh, because this would be perfectly smooth. It's matte right now, so it's not quite as clear as it could be or nice. Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is I did add a bit, it's easier to see on the white print, a bit of a chamfer all around the edge. So that, that helps if you're holding it in your hands, it's not quite as sharp. It doesn't cut into your hands quite as much, but yeah. This is basically how I imagined it uh, when I first started this project, just like a sleek little thing that sits on your desk and is just fully touch sensitive and uh, and it has actually a decent amount of weight too with the plastic case so yeah now there are most of the components are on the top I actually could have designed this to hide them on the bottom and make the top surface just perfectly flat and I think maybe that would be that would probably be the way to go and just put the LEDs through holes reverse mounted so that you know they fire up or towards the side uh, but I think it looks aesthetically more interesting when you can see all the components and, you know, right above the keyboard.
But yeah, anyway, um, this just is generally one of my more complicated uh, things I've designed in terms of the board layout and the case integration. So, you know, it does take quite a few um, revisions to get things right. And that's something you, you should try to keep in mind. I should have started by printing out more of these like templates to make sure I got measurements right and stuff before printing out the full cases because now I just wasted a significant amount of plastic. Um, like I said, I'll I'll find a way. I'll, I'll probably just end up gluing something in the hole and using these as like part trays or something because this general shape is still useful. But yeah, it would have been better if I printed out more of these like templates uh, when I first started. So that's one thing that I'm, I'm still learning uh, about, you know, when, when 3D printing, um, getting tolerances correct, um, setting things up correctly so that I have enough wiggle room. Uh, but things are still kind of firm enough that they don't just pop out. And I'm still learning that. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a ramble. And um, yeah, I guess uh, before we go, uh, I guess I'll end this video by showing you guys some glamour pics. <laughs>